and welcome to the Ghostface Girls latest video, straight from Celluloid Screams 2015. We're talking day two. Yesterday kicked off with They Look Like People, which was a film about shapeshifters. Now, that's a mythology that isn't always explored in horror, so it was quite interesting that this micro-budget indie film had taken that on. However, unfortunately, we weren't really too big fans of the film. Um, it was a little bit too slow paced, it didn't really delve into shapeshifter kind of like the concept enough and it was kind of like a poor man's resolution or the battery. I think that's a key problem is we've see, perhaps seen too many of these films where there's sort of a, a really sort of close male friendship um, and if you don't get the chemistry right it doesn't really work. Yeah I don't think anybody in the movie particularly had great chemistry. Um, I mean, it wasn't the worst film ever, but it's certainly not one that I'll be revisiting. Yeah. Following on from that was He Never Died, uh, which was great. I mean, I, it was something I mentioned looking forward to on the podcast. Yeah. But it was actually better than I expected. It was great. Henry Rollins delivered a fantastic performance. I think it's going to be quite a memorable one. He's very sarcastic and deadpan in the role, and it's just his delivery of all the lines and all the kind of extreme situations he finds himself in. Yeah. It just works so well, and it's one that gets you laughing out loud. Yeah, and there, there, there was a one that all the cast had chemistry, and it really flowed from those characters. Yeah, then. and in some ways it did remind me slightly of some guy who kills people with the whole relationship with the long-lost daughter, trying to reconnect. Yeah, yeah, that, that's favourite one, yeah. <laughs> and then following on from that is probably, I would say, our worst film of yeah. the festival, which is Excess Flesh. Now, this was one we were a bit dubious going into anyway, because it had been um, dubbed the uh, starry eyes of, of the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. However, the film didn't really explore the fashion industry in any depth whatsoever. It was just two really unlikable characters doing unlikable things. Um, it's the kind of movie that would put you off food, all kinds of food. Yeah. There's too many really big close-ups of people eating. I just get really annoyed that we have a whole host of horror films in which there are close male friendships, um, tested to extreme situations, and then you have a female-led horror film and they literally fall out over sandwiches. Like, that bugs and a, me. And a boy. Yeah. So, yeah. no, not pleased with that one. No, no, and no. it just didn't kind of really do anything that interesting. I felt it was underdeveloped in terms of character development and by the end it just it lost its way completely. It just started just put throwing random stuff in. So the narrative wasn't even coherent and I just I honestly mm -hmm. lost the plot with it. So sorry excess flesh but uh, that's a no from us. Yeah. Starry Eyes did it better and I wasn't a huge fan of that. So. Yeah, I, agree. I think, I think um, yeah, I appreciate Starry Eyes a bit more and um, I'm going to rewatch that on Netflix at some stage. Yeah. So it was at this point in the night we lost Hayley due to illness. Yeah. Uh, because the lurgy is, is rife around here. Yeah, the virus is uh, <laughs> taking hold of me. So I went to watch These Final Hours, which is an Australian film about an impending apocalypse. Um, from the first sort of, well, you saw the first few minutes. And the force are coming. Yeah, and it, it's it's not got the greatest opening ever, but sort of as it is as it grows, the main lead actor and the young girl he, he's travelling with, they've got great chemistry. She, it's always difficult to find good child actors, I think, who are not sickly or anything like that. But no, she was really good. Um, so yeah, and there were tears during that one, not from me, but someone in the back. Yeah. Mm. Um, and then we had the witch which was one of the ones I was really looking forward to, have been and for I like nearly a year. <laughs> and I was disappointed by it. I mean, it's a thoroughly good film. Uh, you know, I'm not taking anything away from that. I just felt that, it, yeah, it was a victim of its own hype. I, a bit like Good Night Mommy in some ways as well, I would say. Yeah, I th yeah, I think... Yeah, there's sort of a point at which you, you kind of go, oh, I want something to happen now, I want to take this further. There's some really good imagery in there, but there's just not a full thing. And finally was The Secret Film, which uh, on this occasion was Darling, uh, starring Lauren Ashley Carter, who of course was in Drug Face a couple of years ago. And The Woman. And The Woman. So, I've got to be honest, not my cup of tea. Um, I think... It could do with being shorter, <laughs> and it, it did rely a lot on sort of quite quite a screechy soundtrack. So yeah, I think it feel like it had a, in there somewhere was a good concept, but it kind of got lost to the style of it. Um, 
lots of sort of trippy sequences. There was even a warning before the film that it had flashing lights and everything like that. So yeah, I, I can't say I was thrilled by it, but I, I think everything yesterday, it was all about He Never Died. Definitely. He Never Died is the top film of the festival for us so far. Yeah. And we'll be back to talk about Sunday's offerings a little bit later.